Here is the first packet lesson, Unit 4.1. Hopefully you had a chance to watch the pre-lesson. Pre-lesson should be very valuable. So essentially on example 1A, I'm going to concentrate on that negative exponent, which simply, if that's outside of a fraction, it just means flip the fraction. In other words, put everything where it ain't, but then it's still cubed. So that would be 125 all over 8. All right. So let's go on to the next one. This one, and don't forget your good friend PEMDAS. you got to follow that. So parentheses means anything inside the parentheses technically, but I'm going to allow the exponent thing in the parentheses to kind of draw my attention to this. I'm going to do that first. Negative 4 squared is 16. Power to a power, I multiply. And then this just turns into 3x to the negative 2. Now, 16 times 3 is just 48. Now I have a decision to make. What am I going to do with this x to the negative 2? What I'm going to do is I'm going to use this, the old rule, when the bases are the same and you're multiplying, you add the exponents, and that would end up giving me x to the 4. The other way of doing it is to put this where it ain't. So I'd get x to the 6 all over x squared. Where is it warmer? Upstairs by how many? Four. So either way, it'll work. All right. Now this one, I warned you in the pre-lesson, don't you dare distribute this two in there. That is a no-no. I already gave you the clue. PEMDAS, clean up anything inside the parentheses first, especially if you have subtraction or addition. So this would turn into one-fourth minus one-half. And that's to the second power. Again, don't you dare distribute this individually. Now I need to find common denominators. One-fourth minus two-fourths squared, which would be negative one-fourth squared, which is positive one-sixteenth. Once again, we're going to take care of stuff within the parentheses. This three to the negative one power turns into one-third. Anything to the zero power is one. And they got that negative 2 power sitting there lingering. Well, 1 third minus 1 is just negative 2 thirds. And that's to the negative 2 power. See, that's a math problem all by itself, just that negative exponent. And if it attaches itself to a x, excuse me, fraction, you flip it. So it would be negative 3 halves. The negative doesn't go anywhere. It just sticks around. Squared. Negative times a negative is positive, And then I get 9 fourths. There's my final answer for example 3b. All right. There are a million problems on the back side here. And here we go. Simplify. Well, if you were listening to my pre-lesson, I told you the denominator of this fractional exponent is always what's called the index. So it's the fourth root of 16. And I did say to do that first, which is 2. And now I'm going to go 2 cubed which is 8. Now think about this. Would you really want to go 16 cubed first and then figure out what the fourth root of that is? No way, Jose. All right, so instead of doing both of these, I'm just going to do one of them because uh, it's kind of overkill. They're very similar, so I'll just pick this one. So this is quite the mess. But there is an invisible one there, and then there's an invisible one there. And I'm going to go power to a power, power to a power, power to a power, power to a power, which means multiply. So I get 8 to the 2 thirds. X, see if I multiply 3 times 2 thirds, these 3's would disappear. That would be squared. Then I get 27 to the 2 thirds power. And then 9 times 2 thirds, the 3 would go into the 9 3 times. 3 times 2 is 6. That would be Y to the sixth. So, I know we'll, we'll get to this in a minute, but what is the cubic root of 8? 2. What's 2 squared? 4. x squared. That x is going nowhere. What's the cubic root of 27? 3. What's 3 squared? 9. y to the sixth. Times. Now, I'm going to do the same thing here, because I see I got a power to a power, power to a power. So, I get x to the negative 2 y to the negative 4. 
Now we have choices, and you know I don't want to confuse you, but it's like this is all over one. Uh, for these two, I'm going to choose to go, hey, when the bases are the same and you're multiplying, which we are, you add the exponents. What's 2 plus negative 2? 0. So I get 4. And then the other thing I'm going to do is I'm going to put this where it ain't. So I'm going to bring it down, and it's going to join that y to the 6th by multiplication. So I would get 4 over 9y to the 10th power. And that's where the problem stops. All right. So let's go to this one. I didn't show you any of the pre-lesson, nothing about these. So uh, we're just going to have to hang in there. So let me give you a sample problem. This is what I would have given you for your pre-lesson information. But if this was the math problem, you'd say, hey, 2 to the x equals 2 to the 8th. Wouldn't these kind of just disappear? And you'd go, hey, x has to equal 8. So I have my students repeat this in class, but common bases, happy places. Common bases, happy places. Because it really turns it into an easy math problem. See, this one has common bases, which means these exponents, 3x minus 3, has to equal this one, x plus 1. See, even if my base was a 12, it doesn't matter what the bases are as long as they are the same. Because then I can set the exponents equal to each other, and then I just solve. So I'm going to add 3, add 3. So I get 2x equals 4. Divide by 2, I get x is 2. So there's my answer. Now notice, this one has common bases. This one doesn't. I have an 8 and a 2. Common bases, happy places. 99.9% .9 of the time, you're going to take the big one, and you're going to change it, and you're going to use this as the base. In other words, 8 can be represented as 2 cubed. And that's to the x minus 1 power equals 2 to the x plus 1 power. Now over here, I got a power to a power, so I have to take that 3 and distribute it through. So I get 2 to the 3x minus 3 equals 2 to the x plus 1. And notice, common bases, happy places. So these kind of drop out. I know that this exponent has to equal that exponent. And now I just solve. Subtract x, subtract x, add 3, add 3. So I get 2x equals 4. Divide by 2, I get x is 2. Okay? Now letter C is going to be a little trickier, but don't lose sight of the fact common bases, happy places. Now here's my base. It's a 2. Here's another base. It's an 8. What did I say in this previous problem? 99.9% .9 of the time, you're going to take the bigger base and you're going to make it be the smaller base. So I'm going to make that 8 2 cubed. Now here's a reverse rule. If I said x to the negative 2 equals 1 over x squared, in other words, if I put a negative exponent where it ain't, it becomes positive. But if I put a positive exponent where it ain't, it would become negative. And that's what I'm going to do right now. I'm going to bring all of this up because that would give me 2 to the x equals 2 to the negative 3. And then these would drop out of the problem, and I could say, hey, those two things have to be equal. So x is negative 3. All right. Maybe you remember some of those from Algebra 2. Um, down here, similar, but now they're going to change the base on us. So look at, guys, 9, 27. In these problems, I just got done saying 99.9% .9 of the time, you're going to change the bigger base into the smaller base. Here's your point whatever, 1% where you can't represent 27 as 9 to the first or 9 squared. It doesn't work. So we have to change both of these. So I'm going to change the 9 to 3 squared, which is x plus 1. And then I've got equals the square root of 3 cubed. Now this still looks quite messy. Well, here I have a power to a power, so I'm going to multiply 2x plus 2. And here I'm going to remember a rule that I taught you in the pre-lesson. 
I'm going to take the power and I'm going to put it over the index. It's just something you can do. And notice we have common bases now. So these would cancel. I'd end up with 2x plus 2 equals 3 halves. Now, I don't know what you would do, but I'm going to double this just to get rid of that fraction. So that would be 4x plus 4 equals 3. I'm going to subtract 4, subtract 4, so I get 4x is negative 4. Divide by 4, and I get x is negative 1. And there it is. All right, last two problems, you guys. I want you to notice this right here is the same thing as this. And if I don't point that out to you, some of you might be confused, but I want you to notice this is to the first power. These two things are separate. This 3 halves does not attach itself to that 4 because there's no parentheses. So I can divide by 4, gone, divide by 4, and that would turn into x to the 3 halves equals 8. Now this is interesting. This is a little different. Remember, when you're solving these problems, you want x to the first, x to the first. You see what I'm talking about? x to the first, which means... What can I raise this thing to so that when I multiply this by something, it'll turn into a 1? Well, it would just be the reciprocal. But if I do it to that side, i got to do it to this side. See, this, all this, turns into x. This is just a basic math problem we've been working on. What's the cubic root of 8? 2. What's 2 squared? 4. There it is. A little different. Now look at the difference between this one and this one. This 5 is definitely inside these parentheses, so I cannot divide by 5 to get started. You want to hear something weird? That's not a 5. That's the square root of 5. So that would be a mess from the beginning if you divided by 5. But I'm going to multiply it. I'm going to take this exponent and multiply it by 2. But I'm going to do the same thing over here. See, over here it would cancel. So I'd get 5x. Over here I'd get 225. And now it's just a simple little math problem. So x is 45. And that finishes it up, guys.